Well, hi there. Welcome to Bella's Vistas. This is probably my signature shot. It's Cressman Woods, used to be Cressman Woods, now it's called Homer Watson Park. Here I'm revisiting the scene. I'm using a 4x5 folding camera, a little Peter Gowland uh, Calumet 4x5 with a 90mm lens. Back in the 80s, I shot this on color, but I'm shooting black and white today. Just wanted to see what it would be like. I'm setting up my 4x5 camera with black and white film. The shot that I did in color was on a billboard, three different billboards on the Highway 401 and 403, talking about Grand River Country. But here I'm in the park, I'm getting ready, I'm putting a red filter on. This will increase the contrast of my scene on black and white film, really darken the sky down quite a bit. Getting my exposures. This lens only goes down to f45. Back in the day I would be shooting like f64, but 45 is pretty well stopped down as well. I'm using the cable release here to keep the shake down. Mostly always use a cable release, in fact I always would use a cable release on a 4x5 camera. Got my exposure set. It's good to warm the shutter up a couple clicks just before you take the picture to make sure you get an accurate exposure, so that's what I'm doing. I've already pre-focused my scene. I've got everything set up. Ready to make the exposure. Now I'm taking out a 4x5 film holder. There's two sheets of film in each 4x5 holder, one on each side. You have a silver side out when it's not exposed. After you make the exposure, you put the slide in with the black side out so you know that it's exposed. So I'm getting ready, pulling the slide out now. Okay, now make the exposure, click like that, and then put the slide back in. You only get one shot every time. See, there's the silver side, there's the black side. We don't want to double expose, so we make sure of that. This is the scene here, you see it in color. At the end of the video, you'll see it in black and white. This is just the digital shot that I did while I was doing this. Here I'm making the measurement of the exposure with my spot meter, using the Sekonic spot meter, one degree spot. I'm gonna bracket the exposure a little bit. Again, you can see what it looks like in color. Putting the slide in for another exposure. Pull out the slide. Make the exposure. Put the slide back in with the dark side towards the front. And we're done. Look at that. Gonna make another exposure here. There you can see the front of the camera, the Calumet Gowland with the 90mm Schneider lens. 90mm is wide angle on a 4x5 camera. It's a really nice lens to use too, I really enjoy using that lens. It's a Schneider lens, goes back to my youth. Well here I go again. This is a different type of film holder, but it's always the same. The white side is out. Take your exposure. That's what it looks like in black and white. Now we're going to process some film. The first thing we have to do is mix up the chemistry. We start out with water at 125 degrees. Just tap water. Measure the amount of water in here. Now we're going to add the powder developer. This is D76. It used to be in paper packages, but now it's in some indestructible plastic. You need the scissors to open it. I'm mixing the chemical in, the powdered chemical. Now way back it used to be in different parts, but they've made chemical sealating so that the chemical compounds mix in at the right time, so you don't need to have so much trouble to mix it. But you start off at 125 degrees, you mix in the powder. You don't want to get air into the solution while you're doing this. I'm using a Kodak process thermometer. Back in the day they were $135. I hate to guess how much they are now. 
so you don't want to break that thermometer. It's in a stainless steel casing, but you just be very careful with it. It's a mercury thermometer. If you get mercury in your chemicals, you're going to have lots of trouble. So there's numerous reasons to be careful with it. Anyway, I'm stirring the chemical in now. As it starts to clear, then I'm going to bring the volume up to 3.8 liters, one U.S. gallon. I find it much easier mixing the chemicals with uh, American measure. So now we're going to uh, bring the volume up to 3.8 liters. So I pour, these are two liter uh, stainless steel beakers. I've been using those for many years. There, now I'm going to bring the volume up with hot water to 3.8 liters. That'll help the chemistry to mix in. Now we pour it in there. See, there's lots of powder left in the bottom, but that'll mix in much easier now. You're getting close to having like a super saturated solution with this stuff, so temperature is important. Time and temperature is what analog photography is all about. When you're making your exposure, it's the f-stop and the shutter speed that controls your exposure. When you're mixing the chemicals, it's the temperature of the solution and uh, the time it takes to mix it. So here we're mixing it in. It's getting clear now. We're looking pretty good. So the developer is clear. That's great. Just stir it. Make sure there's no little particles in there. Any little particle of undissolved developer could ruin your film. So we'll put that aside now. So the developer's ready to go. It's still, it's way hot. We gotta have it cooled down to 68 before we use it. Next thing I'm gonna do is mix up the stop bath. Then I have a rubber tank for fixer. I don't have a floating lid for the second tank. So um, here's an Ilfasol and uh, Ilford chemicals, I struggle with figuring out how to measure that. And the instructions weren't all that helpful. But anyway, I got it right finally. I figured out, I think it was like one part to 20 parts. That's way too strong. I can tell just by looking at it that that's way too strong of a solution. But in the end, I got the mix proper and there we go, we're ready to, it's ready to go. Like I said, the temperature has to be right on too. There, I think I had to mix it a little more to get the measurement right. You want to have everything right. If the stop bath is too strong, it's going to really hurt your film when you put the film from the developer to the stop bath. Now the fixer, this is Kodak Fixer, Kodak Rapid Fix. It's a liquid, again, it's not as hard to mix as the developer was. The developer was Kodak D76, this is Kodak Rapid Fix and uh, it's very quick when you're working with it. And this is enough to make one U.S. gallon, so that makes it very easy. You just follow the directions. If you start off with the right amount of water, you add part A and then you add part B and you're ready to go. I'm starting out with some water. Now I'm going to add the part A. Just add the whole bottle of that. If you were using it for paper, it would be mixed a little weaker, but we're using it just for film. So we mix it one whole, one whole bottle of concentrate to one gallon. So I'm adding part A. It's really nice mixing liquid concentrates. It's much easier than powdered chemicals. I've got the overhead fan running to keep the fumes down in here too. We never used to worry about anything like that. I used to mix the chemicals with my bare hands and didn't worry about having a fume hood or ventilation or anything. But it's different times now. Thank you. 
This is the hardener part of the fixer. It's good for the film. Makes the film harder. Yeah, mix that in. Then we'll bring our final volume up to 3.8 liters. These rubber tanks are good for 4x5 film or 5x7 film. We're just using 4x5. So now I'm going to measure the volume. Wow, I gotta add some more water now to bring it up to 3.8 liters. One US gallon. It's a lot of work, you know, compared to going out and shooting a flashcard full of pictures and coming home and just putting them on the computer. What I'm gonna do with this film when we uh, finish processing it, I'm gonna scan it and then print it from the scans. We'll show you what the scans look like in black and white when we're done. Now you see we're almost right up to the top when we get to 3.8 liters in this tank. There you go. That's how the film hanger goes in. I've got my film in a, a paper safe on the other side of the room. I'm going to load the film into film holders and then we'll process it right in here. You start out in the first tank, the developer, then you move it into the stop and then into the fixer. It's totally manually done. What I'm doing here is taking out a bit of the solution because I'm going to process some roll film before I do the 4x5 sheet film. That's going to be a separate video, so it's not going to be in this video. So I'm just pulling out some of the stop, bath, and fixer because for the roll film, I'm going to use a different type of developer. This film developer I'm using is D76 for the 4x5 Tri-X film. I'm just pulling out stop bath and fixer because I'm going to mix the developer and then process the roll film that I have in my roll film tank. But we'll just get back to this in a second. Okay. Exposed film is in the paper safe there. I've taken it out of the film holders and put the film into the paper safe. Just showing the film holders here. You can see these are silver. They haven't been shot. One of them was shot. So we're going to pull that one out. But the silver one is unexposed. It's so important when you're shooting sheet film. There's no way to know if it's been exposed. Except by the color of the slide. There's the film holder. I'm going to take the film out of the paper safe. Put it in the film holder. Then when I, I'm going to use six. I think I'm going to process... I'm going to process six sheets of film this time. 4x5, 320 Tri-X pan film. So I have my processing time marked down. 7 and 3 quarter minutes. So that's 7 minutes 45 seconds. Going to set that on the timer. 68 degrees. Like I said, it's time and temperature. And agitation. So my tanks are set up here. Going to just make sure they're up to temperature. You see I have the time set on the timer in the background there. So now I have to warm up the soup. Got a tank with some hot water in it here. That's my film tank that I processed the roll film in. So I'm going to drop that in there. There's hot water in that tank and I'm just going to heat it up to 68 degrees because we want to be exactly 68 degrees. It looks painstaking. It really is painstaking. This is a lot of trouble to do stuff like this. But it's a lot of fun too. I mean, you really get interesting results when you're done too. Just have to bring it up to temperature. From the developer to the stop to the fix. And that's done in total darkness just by feel. You can see a faint glow from the timer. But that's all. Okay, so... 
you can always go from left to right with the chemicals. You can move things from the developer to the stop, but you never go from right to left. If you get any stop bath in the developer, it's going to ruin the developer. If you get fixer in the developer, it's going to ruin that as well. There you can see I've got the light ready. I'm getting ready to turn that light off and start working in the dark. When I go in the dark, I'm going to grab my film holders, drop them into the developer. Well, we're done now. So you can see that's how they were in the developer. The, I lift them up like that, drain them like that, drop them back in, pick them up again, agitate the film like that. This film is clear now. It's been in the stop bath. The rapid fixer clears the film like in about one minute, so you want to leave it in there maybe two to four minutes, something like that in the rapid fix. Then you rinse it off. And we used to use running water to wash things. I remember in the studio we had a, a washer that we only had cold water. And even with Hypo Eliminator, after 20 minutes in the cold water wash, the film and paper wasn't properly washed. So this I want to make sure this is properly washed. So I'm going to pull the film out of the fixer and then I'll put it in the water. Okay, so I pull it out, put it in the wash tank. Then I shuffle through them a couple times. Then I'm going to change the wash water again. Okay, now I'm going to change the wash water here. I got a pail of water just gonna pour it in and I leave it sit on the film for like a minute minute and a half dump it out and change the water five times then you're gonna be thoroughly washed because you get five changes of water with the film sitting in the water for a minute or a minute and a half every time a little bit of agitation and you're done now we put a little bit of photo flow in the wash water going over to the film dryer that's a Canadian made film dryer from way back in the day that's made in Pickering Ontario I believe photo engineering put the film hangers in there I need to have six five or six spaces to hang the sheets of film we're doing very small volumes of thing these days and used to be my film dryer would be just full of film process like 10 rolls of 35 millimeter or a dozen sheets of 4 by 5 at a time. You can see the size of the negatives there. That's 20 square inches of film per shot. 4 inches by 5 inches. Just hang them up to dry in the dryer. There's a filter on top. I put a HEPA filter on top of this dryer. That was a major upgrade. Did that ever save me a lot of work? It just had a furnace filter on before. I put a HEPA filter on there and hardly any spotting anymore after that really helped. So there you go. Like I said, it's a painstaking process. You can see the negatives there. I'm pretty happy with those negatives. It's a long time since I processed film. You can see the enlarger behind me there. I've got a 4x5 Chromega enlarger and a 35mm lights enlarger there that I still have. I might just go back to doing some uh, fine art black and white photography. There might be a bit of a market for that. Printing on fiber-based paper, maybe. Right now, my plan is to process this film, dry it, then scan it, and see what it looks like. 
We can make prints on the uh, 9880 Epson printer. We can print up to 44 inches wide on that, 100 feet long. It's a great printer. Film's in the dryer. Turn it on, let it dry. Pull the film out, we've scanned it. There's our results. Look at that, I'm pretty happy with those. These are some scans from other negatives that I had in the past. Wow, Mew Lake in Algonquin Park, Hawaii, shot on a 4x5 Toyo field camera, and Quebec City.